and he actually one day was playing around with the x-ray cathode or it wasn't actually called the x-ray cathode yet it was just a cathode tube and he happened to have his hand on a piece of uh, photographic film and later on he realized that he could see a bone on that film just so he discovered it by accident as the way it happened so he started playing around with it doing experiments with it and he needed someone to like be his guinea pig so he got his wife to be his basically his lab rat and so he started you know figuring out what this whole thing was and started realizing he could take pictures so every now and then online you might see a, an x-ray of a hand with a ring on it that's a, a picture of his wife's hand it's one of the first x-rays that were ever produced the problem is is because they didn't know that radiation was dangerous back then she had so much exposure that it ended up killing her she died of cancer because of the exposure that he gave her to radiation but that's pretty much how it was discovered now there's also uh, another date that you want to know in 1901 in 1901 he won the Nobel Prize for his discovery now because he didn't know what it was at the time he called it x-ray just like in, in math, algebra, when you're solving for something that you don't know, you call it X. So that's how it got its name. So remember the date that he discovered it, November 8, 1895, and then uh, 1901, he won the Nobel Prize. The thing about x-rays, though, this, this is what also began uh, medical lawsuits, because now if one doctor said you didn't have a broken bone and another doctor took an x-ray and said you did, then the patient wanted to go back and sue the other doctor. So we never really heard of any uh, medical malpractice lawsuits until x-rays were first discovered. Also on page three of the book, it tells you the properties of x-rays. It says that they are a form of electromagnetic radiation and they're similar similar to gamma rays, okay? If you remember from the Incredible Hulk, gamma rays are what turn the guy into the Incredible Hulk, okay? So they're, they're kind of the same. Gamma rays are just a little bit stronger than x-rays. X-rays are strong because they can go through your body, all right? When you get an x-ray done, that radiation will come out of the machine. It'll go through your body. It'll even go through the table that you're lying on can even go through the floor so if you're on the second floor of a building that radiation can go through the floor down to the the people on the first floor all right so because of that the x-ray room in the doctor's office or in the hospital has lead all around it all the walls have lead the floor would have lead so that the radiation won't pass through it okay now there's a list of properties on the bottom of page three for x-rays that you definitely want to know and they're also in the notes okay which would be on the bottom of page two which right now those of you here don't have it because I've got a copy of that for you but on the bottom of page two uh, is the same list of things as the bottom of page three in the book all right it says they travel at the speed of light which is 186,000 miles per second. Okay, make sure you know that's miles per second. All right, they only travel in a straight line. Okay, so x-rays just travel in a straight line. They don't curve around anything. Uh, they make certain chemicals emit light and they can ionize matter. I, this is a, another important term, ionizing matter. Ionize means to cause damage. So we'll be talking about how radiation can cause damage to your body. It can cause tumors to form, it can cause skin cancer, cataracts, things like that. So ionization is basically changing the cells 
and the atoms in your body which causes uh, these health problems. All right, can you see x-rays? You can't see the x-ray beam, right? Okay. You can't hear it and you can't feel it. All right, so it's pretty much invisible. So that's why we have a light that shines out of the bottom of the machine to show you where the x-ray beam is going to be. So you can't see it, hear it, or feel it. All right. The energy that the x-ray beam has to pass through your body is because of the wavelength. So up here you see a picture, uh, kind of like the waves in the ocean. All right, the distance between each wave is the wavelength. All right, and as you notice over here, they get closer and closer and closer. So right here, this would be something like radio waves or a microwave or a television. All right, you can sit close to the TV. It's not going to make you uh, sick. It's not going to cause you to go blind. You know, no matter what your mom tells you, you know, don't sit right next to the TV. Um, some people think it's dangerous to stand right next to a microwave. The thing is, is there is radiation that comes out of there, but the wavelength of that radiation is so big, there's so much space there that it just hits you and bounces off. Okay, It's when the waves get really close together like right here, that's what allows it to have so much energy that it just pushes right through your body. Okay, it's kind of like if you ever went to a high school football game and at the beginning they make this big sign out of paper and all the football players run through it, you know, and they tear it apart. Okay, if only one person ran through it, it's not really going to do much to it. But the closer that all those waves are, the more energy that it has to push through your body. So this is where x-rays would be, right about here. And then gamma is after that. So this is a very short wavelength. A short wavelength equals more power. So the closer those waves are of radiation, the more power it has to penetrate your body. Okay? So these x-rays and gamma rays will go through the wall, they'll go through a brick wall. Okay? The only thing they won't go through is lead. That's why we put lead in the walls in the x-ray. So at the bottom of page two of the notes, it tells you that um, for wavelength and penetrating power, Shorter is stronger, and a longer wavelength is weaker. All right, on page four in the book, It talks about um, the different sources of radiation, where you get radiation from. You have two main sources. You have natural radiation and man-made radiation. So in the book, under ionizing radiation and sources, um, you'll read there that you have natural and man-made. All right, natural radiation is radiation that's out there that you really can't do much to avoid. Okay, what are some examples of natural radiation? The sun, okay. What kind of radiation is that? UV, ultraviolet radiation. What else is out there? If you ever fly in an airplane, you're gonna get exposed to more radiation than someone would that's on the ground, okay? Because you have radiation from the sun, but also from the stars. That's called cosmic radiation. All right, there's radiation in the ground. You really, it's very minute. In other words, you can't really detect it, but you also can't really get rid of it. So you might have a small amount of radiation in the soil, in water, things like that, okay? But all of that is natural.